Welcome to ProShake 2.0, the newest version of the Windows-based program for equivalent linear site response analysis. ProShake 2.0, like the original program, is organized around three managers that can be found at the very top of the screen. The Input Manager, the Solution Manager, and the Output Manager. We'll start with the Input Manager. First, we'll specify that we want to define a new project by clicking on the New icon at the left side of the icon ribbon that runs across the top of the screen. This will automatically put us in the Input Manager. The Input Manager allows us to define our soil profile and the ground motions we apply to it. First, let's take a look at the Input Manager. The upper portion of the Input Manager screen allows input of project-specific data. Just below that are two tabs labeled Profiles and Motions for entering soil profile and input motion data. Off to the right is a tall, narrow pane that will provide a graphical display of our soil profile as we define it. We'll start by entering project data, a short project identifier, the names or initials of the analyst, a longer description of the project, the date of the analysis, the number of soil profiles and input motions, and the desired units. The units can be toggled back and forth at any time. Enter 1 for the number of soil profiles and 6 motions. Moving to the Profiles tab, you can see that it is already set up for the number of profiles you specified. We'll then start entering data for Profile 1 starting with profile-specific data, the number of soil layers, the layer at which the input motion will be applied, and the depth of the water table. Enter 11 layers, 10 soil layers plus a base layer, and a groundwater table depth of 5 feet. Then we'll start entering data for each of the soil layers. Beginning with layer 1 and using the Layer Detail tab, enter a material name, and select the Darren Dulley model from the list of available soil models. Then enter the thickness of the soil layer, its unit weight, and either its shear wave velocity or its maximum shear modulus. The one that was not entered will be calculated from the one that was. Note that as soon as you entered a thickness, a blank box appeared in the Layer Plot pane on the right-hand side of the screen. When you entered a shear wave velocity for that layer, the box took on a color that indicated the shear wave velocity value. As you enter more layers, this plot will evolve and the colors will help you see if you made an obvious error in data entry. Then, we will enter the information required for the Darendelle soil model, the plasticity index, overconsolidation ratio, lateral earth pressure coefficient, number of cycles, and frequency. Finally, we can specify whether we want to limit the shear stresses in our analyses to not exceed the shear strength of the layer. If so, check the box that applies the strength correction, enter cohesion and friction angle values, and enter the stress ratio at which you want the soil model to diverge from the behavior specified by the Darendelli model. This will produce a stress-strain curve that becomes asymptotic to the strength you defined. We can check our soil model by clicking the Plot button on the Layer Detail tab. This will bring up a plot of the modulus reduction and damping curves and the backbone curve that corresponds to the modulus reduction curve and Gmax value. If we have applied a strength correction, both the uncorrected and corrected curves are shown. This plot also allows the stress ratio to be changed and the effects of changes to be seen very quickly. You can toggle back and forth between linear and logarithmic strain scales to see the modulus and damping curves and the backbone curve in their customary formats. On the right side of the Layer Detail tab, we'll need to tell the program what kind of data we are interested in viewing in the Output Manager. Using the available checkboxes, indicate what you would like to see. If you want to see the same data for all of the layers, check the Apply to All Layers box. Now let's enter data for the second layer. You can do this by means of the Layer Detail tab, just as we did for the first layer, 
but you can often speed things up by moving to the Layer Summary tab, which shows the input data in tabular form with each row of the table containing all of the input data for a particular layer. You can use ProShake's drag and drop feature to duplicate the properties of a given layer by holding a left click and dragging the cursor down to the next layer. By releasing the mouse button, all of the properties of the first layer are assigned to the second layer. If you want to change any of those properties, you can do so directly on the Layers Summary tab. For our trial profile, we'll drag and drop the properties of the first layer to the next four layers. Then we'll do the same for the sixth layer, but we'll then edit those properties to represent a different soil unit. We'll then drag and drop the properties of the 6th layer to the 7th through 10th layers. Finally, we need to define the properties of our base layer. We'll select the rock model for that layer based on the Layer Detail tab and enter the required unit weight and shear wave velocity. Now we have defined our soil profile, and we can visualize the profile in the layer plot on the right side of the screen. The colors displayed for the various layers indicate their shear wave velocities, and the horizontal blue line indicates the depth of the water table. If you want to expand the depth scale, you can do so by clicking on the small horizontal triangle in the upper left corner of the plot. You can assign the colors to other properties using the drop-down menu labeled Plot Items. A line plot of each of the plot items can be obtained using the Profile Plot tab. And information about the active layer can be viewed under the Messages tab. Line plots of profile properties can also be generated by clicking the plot button on the right side of the top of the profiles tab. These plots can all be copied to the project report file and to the project data file. Let's say we're interested in the sensitivity of the ground motions to the shear wave velocity of the upper five layers of the soil profile. Instead of recreating those profiles from scratch, go up to the top of the profiles tab and click the duplicate button twice. This will create two new profiles that are exactly the same as the first profile. Go to Profile 2 and reduce the shear wave velocities of the first five layers. Then go to Profile 3 and increase them. Then click the Plot button on the Profiles tab. It will show you the properties of all three soil profiles. Once the soil profiles have been defined, we are ready to specify the input motions that are to be applied to each of them. Clicking on the Motions tab, we'll see that the program is ready to accept the number of motions we initially indicated. To add a motion, click on the ellipsis next to the Motion File Name text box. This will bring up a screen that shows all of the available ground motions. Single clicking on any of them will show plots of the time history and response spectrum and a series of useful ground motion parameters. To add the motion to your project, either click on the Open button in the lower right part of the screen or double click on the file name. Then, going back to the Motions tab, advance to the second motion and repeat the process. Repeat again for all of the additional motions. The motions can also be viewed in a series of plots that are initiated from the Motions tab. Clicking on Acceleration Time History will open a screen on which the acceleration time history is plotted. From this screen, we can also plot velocity, displacement, and HUSID parameter time histories for any of the motions. The units can be changed and the numerical values of individual points on the curve can be seen by moving the cursor and reading the crosshair values. To examine a portion of any ProShake plot more closely, 
Hold the control button down and use the left mouse button to draw a box around the portion of the plot that you are interested in. This action will zoom in on the box you've drawn and can be undone by clicking the reset plot button. Once all of the motions have been entered, we can check to see if anything is missing by clicking the Validate Data button on the ribbon at the top of the main screen. The results of that action will be displayed in the Messages tab in the tall pane at the right of the screen. Once our data has been validated, we are ready to run the program. We'll start that process by going to the Solution Manager. The Solution Manager will contain a table of all of the analyses that are to be run, all of the profiles, and all of the input motions. Click the Analyze button in the lower right corner to begin the analyses. You will be able to track the progress of the analyses in the Messages pane on the right side of the Solution Manager screen. When the analyses are complete, you can move to the Output Manager. The Output Manager has seven tabs. The Solution Convergence tab provides tabular information on the analysis itself. The Ground Motion tab allows plotting of any of the time histories for which output was requested when the soil profile was defined in the Input Manager. Click on the checkbox in the Select column, select the plot type you want, and then click the Plot button to create the plot. Once you've plotted an acceleration time history, you can plot velocity and displacement time histories from the same window. Moving to the Depth Plots tab, profiles of many different parameters can be plotted. The default plot is of peak acceleration, but there are 11 other response and soil property plots that can be selected. Again, the units of both axes can be changed, and both axes can be plotted using linear or logarithmic scales. The default plot interpolates linearly between data points, but cubic spline fits or step functions can also be selected. If you have a lot of layers and a lot of motions, there are a lot of plots available. To help manage them, ProShake has a very handy filtering capability. Let's say you want to plot peak acceleration profiles for Profile 1 for all of the motions. First, move the cursor to a point in the Profile Number column, right-click, and select Filter Profile Number 1. You will see that only the rows of the table with Profile 1 remain. Then click on Plot, and only those layers will be plotted. Close the plot. Go back to the table of plotting options, right-click in any cell, and select Clear All Filters. Now, let's say you are only interested in the response to Motion 3. Go to a cell with Motion 3 in the Motion Number column, right-click on it, and select Filter Motion Number 3. You'll see all cases of Motion 3 remaining, and clicking the Plot button will show you those plots. The Response Spectra tab allows you to plot response spectra for all of the layers you requested response spectrum data for in the Input Manager. The filtering option can be very handy here. Let's say you want to plot response spectra at the ground surface of Profile 1 for all of the motions. First, move the cursor to a point in the Profile Number column, right-click, and select Filter Profile Number 1 you will see that only the rows of the table with Profile 1 remain. Now, since you are interested in the ground surface spectra, move the cursor to the cell for Layer 1, right-click, and select Filter Layer Number 1. Now, the only rows left are those for Profile 1 and Layer 1. Move your cursor to any cell in the Select column, right-click, and choose Select All. Then click the Plot button in the lower left corner. You will see six response spectra for the six input motions. 
One will be highlighted in blue. That is the one corresponding to the highlighted row in the table below the plot. You can choose which one is to be highlighted by clicking the different rows in the table. On the right side, you can change to plots of spectral velocity or spectral displacement. You can plot spectral values versus period or frequency. And you can change the units of the spectral parameter. You are also able to use linear or logarithmic scales and to plot median 84th and 16th percentile spectra. Finally, the Animation tab will allow you to animate the relative displacement pattern over the course of a response analysis. This video has provided an introduction to the use of ProShake 2.0. We hope that you have found it helpful and that you enjoy using the program. For more detailed information, please see the user's manual, which can be downloaded from www.proshake.com.